Hi everybody, this is Dave Vellante and welcome to CUBE Conversations. Over the last several months, we've been talking to IT practitioners about their data protection environment and we're pleased to have Peter Altevoet here. He's the CEO of Corten. Corten is a service provider. Peter, welcome to the CUBE. Thanks for coming on. Hi. Hello. Welcome. So tell us a little bit about uh, Corten. Uh, Corten, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, Corten, we are an internet service provider. And uh, also, our, we have a software and an internet company in the Netherlands, and we are the, the market leader of or the people transportation market in the Netherlands. Uh, so we also have uh, in our data center our yeah, software as a service. So our, our bigger customer is one of our uh, software as a service companies, uh, Corton Software and uh, Corton Internet, and we deliver SaaS service to the Dutch uh, people transportation market. So you started the company about eight years ago, and in the last five years, certainly, the move toward uh, service providers and the cloud, you know, generally now has we, been yeah, really taking off. We started 18, 18 years ago. Oh, 18. Oh, 18, I'm sorry, yes. I misunderstood. So I started uh, by right. myself uh, after my study, uh, alone, 18 years ago. Uh, and at this moment, uh, we've got 60, uh, 68 uh, employees. Um, so, uh, and uh, we, had, uh, we have our, our one uh, solutions, our IT company, Corda Computer Communication, that's an internet service, prof uh, internet service provider. And we, yeah, we are uh, today a, a cloud service provider and deliver cloud services from our data center. And the other part is more the software and internet company and they deliver software as a service and also use our data center. And in 2001, we started with our first data center and um, the, the, yeah, the, the, the last transform transformation of the data center, each four or five years, you will transform your complete data center to the new technology. And that's for, for, the, for the last 50 years, uh, it's still going on. Uh, well, so like many of the practitioners in our audience, you've seen a lot of waves of technology. <laughs> you've lived through the client server wave and the internet and now the, the cloud piece. So, uh, we were talking, and you said about five years ago, if I recall correctly, uh, you transformed your data protection environment. So you moved toward a VMware environment. Cloud was it was was accelerating. What was keeping you up? If you go back to that time frame, what was keeping you up at night about your data protection environment? Yeah, the most the most important thing was uh, five years ago. Um, we saw a transformation uh, that Cisco started with servers. And uh, I saw a presentation that they, uh, they had a different view uh, of the IT. Uh, uh, till five years ago, uh, centrally, the server was centrally and we we're building uh, uh, yeah, the hardware and the, and the services uh, around the server. And Cisco started uh, with, uh, to build servers around the network to place the network centrally. And I believe, um, I was fully believing in this concept. So five years ago, we won one of the first internet service providers and we started with, um, with the, the Cisco UCS servers with the VMware Enterprise Plus virtualization environment. And, and then we st first we started with NetApp. So it, uh, later they called it the FlexPod environment. Um, and in the last two years, uh, we transform our storages more and more to EMC. Um, um, to the EMC uh, Phoenix uh, uh, storages and also the EMC, um, the data domain, um, the, the, the data domain uh, backup services. Peter, why? What was the impetus? What problem were you trying to solve? What was your issue? Um, now what we also do uh, with NetApp, uh, you can make snapshots, it's really nice technology. Um, and with SnapFault, you can replicate the data but the problem is your your snapshot overhead is is so high, um, and we had a lot of problems to uh, that our customers will not pay for the 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 the, the, the yeah the big amount of snapshot overhead uh, on the on the on the system, so the cost uh, will be higher and higher, and um, and since we transformed it, we transformed the the we used the the the, the data domain. At this moment, with data domain, we had a, a, dedu a deduplication ratio uh, higher than 90%. So that 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 saves a lot of um, a lot of storage capacity, 
um, and and also uh, also the the, yeah, the the amount of hours from our employees also the, in the in the maintenance cost. So we save there a lot of money with uh, to to do it in that way, to um, to be competitive uh, with our competitors in the right. Netherlands. Of course, that's important to you because you're you're passing that cost onto the customer or the savings onto the customer. Can you talk about the project itself? What was that like? Uh, specifically, bringing in the infrastructure. How long did it take? You mentioned data domain, I think Avamar. W w talk about the project a little bit, Peter. Yeah, uh, we did two things. We also made a change, at, uh, so each five years. So uh, the, um, from November, we started, um, of this, this summer, we started a project. And in November, our IT projects were starting to transform our new uh, data centers. And what we built in, uh, in the last uh, months, we built a twin data, twi twin data center concept. Um, in Amsterdam and in Utrecht, um, so that are two um, two places, and we've got a, uh, an, a fiber environment, our own fiber environment, and we, we rented the fiber, the dark fibers, um, and all uh, yeah everything we did it by ourselves. So we've got um, a four times four k ten gigabyte connection between the data centers, and also we've got for the EMC Vplex. Uh, environment so we've got two phoenix uh, storages in two data centers um, and there's also connection between the the storages so if you've got an active active uh, storage environment each bit will uh, read and and write on the same uh, of the, and at the same time on the same uh, on in two different locations so we are able to to have physical two data centers and uh, we are able to deliver a really high availability uh, of the servers of our customers and, and also the servers of and, our SaaS, the and, so, and software as a service platform. And specifically the backup. Um, so how does your backup work? You're using both a combination of Avamar and, and data domain, is that right? Yes, we do, yeah. Avamar, Avamar and uh, data domain, yeah. Okay, and, and so you installed those roughly five years ago, is that right? How do you use each and when? Oh, um, the backup project we started, I think, Two years ago, okay. two years ago, we started with uh, to implement. Um, uh, first, we did uh, the the data domain implementation um, because that's yeah that's separate from our. Uh, you, you can you can uh, yeah do that project um, uh, uh, separately separately from your from our IT uh, on data center project. So there's two two different projects. Um, and what we did is uh, still we are transfor transforming. Um, uh, yeah, the backup solutions to our backup as a service solution with uh, with data domain. Okay, so you've got a lower cost infrastructure. Uh, you're able to monetize that for your your customers. You've also got a, I, I guess, an active active uh, uh, capability. Uh, yeah. What? How would you describe the business results? The business impact for both you and your customers. Um, yeah, with the business impact, if uh, we are able to deliver. Uh, a really high-end uh, enterprise, uh, high availability for their business critical applications, and therefore we are able to use our twin data center concept. But we also are able to um, uh, to to use um, to to give the possibility to have a an, a, a less expensive uh, solution to have a single uh, in a single data center. Or what we also able are to it, we are also able to integrate uh, public cloud servers uh, for test or acceptation environments that we're able to um, uh, to, um, to to use the the max of Azure um, uh, Azure public cloud. So what we did with we in our over our twin data center concept, we also had the white label th that's called Azure Pack, and that's um, that's the white labeled version, and we are using the same. Uh, layer um, of uh, of the, the maintaining our environment, so we're able to do hybrid cloud computing, business critical, on our active active twin data center, and um, uh, and for for test environments or for applications with a, a lower a service level agreement, we're able to do the uh, use the, the the public cloud, and so we are able to use uh, to to make a, a, a real hybrid cloud solution for our customers. Peter, a lot of customers are uh, looking at cloud. It's a confusing situation for many of them. They're, they're yeah. concerned. 
uh, particularly as it relates to cloud generally, but also specifically backup, what advice do you give to customers around moving to uh, the cloud? Yeah, that's that's right. The the problem I say um, from from my perspective, in the last 18 years, 80 years ago, our customers also don't go to the shop and they buy a server. It's not uh, over the server. Uh, today, uh, we've got a lot. We have the cloud, but the cloud we is just is just the beginning of a new uh, of a new period um, in IT. Um, because what, what I see, we've got public cloud solutions, we've got private cloud solutions, we've got on-premise IT in different, um, in different uh, uh, companies. So we are a knowledge company and we are able to help our customers to, um, to, to for example, to start to, to maintain the on-premise IT environment, to deliver a backup as a service, uh, from their data to our data center. The next step is that we deliver from our private cloud uh, um, and, uh, some IA, some infrastructure as a service on their own network. And what we see with our customers is it's, um, you, make, uh, you make a road, you make a trip together from, your, uh, from the on-premise environment to the private cloud to, uh, to help them to integrate some public cloud servers. So it's all about uh, yeah, the business of our uh, of our customers. How you can uh, use the, the 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 cloud services what are available in the market. So okay. we are just a knowledge company. Same as eight years ago that they ask they don't ask us a server. No, we need a server to de to de deliver a solution for them. And Peter, it's the same with cloud. Peter, my last question. We're running out of time here, but uh, what do you got cooking for 2015? Any particular initiatives that you can talk about that are that are exciting you? Uh, and initiative, yeah, I see uh, Internet of Things. We see more and more and more uh, IP devices connecting to the network. Um, and what we see, the, 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 all the devices generate data and also the data will grow enormously by our customers. Um, uh, so data management uh, is one, uh, is, a, is an, an important topic. And um, so, yeah, we are able to to deliver the different uh, types of storages, the most active, active, high available till public clouds and everything between. And I think that's really important to, uh, to help our customers to, uh, to make that steps. So you're providing that as a service, I can dial it down or dial it up based on my RPO and my RTO requirements and my cost and my budget. That's right. That's right. That's uh, uh, the, uh, with, with the data domain, we are uh, we are able to do the backup as a service, and it's really important. What's the RPO? What's the RTO? To to get the right solution. What's uh, what's necessary for the business of our customers? All right, Peter Altavolt, uh, CEO of Corton. We're gonna have to leave it there. Thanks very much for coming on the cube and sharing your insights with our community. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante from Wikibon headquarters. This you're watching Cube Conversations, and we'll see you next time.